And we go live to the 78th General Assembly of the United Nations on the fifth day. Let's listen to the statement of Hansa Abdibar, Prime Minister of Somalia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, heads of states and governments, Your Excellency, the President of the 78th session of the United of the um, General Assembly, Your Excellency, the Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, peace and God's blessings be upon you all. It gives me great pleasure to stand before you here at this historic uh, podium to participate in the 78th session of uh, the General Assembly. Mr. President, we express uh, our heartfelt congratulations to you and to the State of Trinidad and Tobago on your election as President of the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I assure you of uh, Somalia's full readiness uh, to work with you as you undertake your new responsibilities. And I would also like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to your predecessor, Mr. Shabak Rosso, for his successful leadership of the past session. Mr. President, the theme of this session, which is rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goals. And here I would like to recall a uh, Somali proverb, Akoni Araga Kama Horisio, which is translated as to be without knowledge is to be without light. Somalia is a country that has been blessed by God with a steadfast people with great and uncountable abilities. And we see clearly the great uh, contradictions between uh, the promise uh, in the land on the one hand and the harsh realities on the other hand that we face. Therefore, I stand before you today here to bear witness uh, to uh, the dire consequences of inaction. Because I realize what this inaction means to ordinary innocent people when the sustainable goals of development remain unachieved. And while we are at the midpoint in the implementation of the SDGs, we must be able to renew and accelerate our actions as the time for complacency has passed. Future generations are looking to us as leaders and as states and as establishments to enhance efforts so that we would arrive at innovative solutions to our problems and our crises and to create effective partnerships to transform promises to policies and to transform commitments to tangible measures. We must honor our moral responsibility not to leave anyone behind. And this is the best way to ensure that everyone lives in peace and prosperity and development and progress sustainably. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the fragility of our interconnected world, but it has also showed the power of solidarity and cooperation during difficult times. This painful experience has exposed, exposed gaps in our ability to mobilize resources and, and in the mechanisms of preparedness uh, and pandemic prevention and the need to respond quickly to international emergencies. Therefore, we must adopt a policy that is includes the entire society. Therefore, we call for establishing platforms to coordinate policies at the global and regional levels and to collect resources and expertise to enhance protection measures to protect against pandemics and maintain readiness. And we must do this on a basis of equality and the STG to detect these shocks, respond to them, recover from them, and enhance our global solidarity. The differences and inequalities in the 
ability to access resources during the COVID showed the urgent need to restructure the global financial order, and it has become more urgent than ever before. We live in one world, an interconnected world, whose peoples have the same aspirations and challenges. Therefore, we are in urgent need to adopt a financial system that is able to change these tangible and painful realities. The time has come. The time has come to leave behind obsolete structures and to remedy historic ills and to build a financial order that is in line with the values of joint prosperity and collective progress. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot plant the seeds of stability and progress unless there is a land that is nourished with the principles of consultation and inclusiveness. Today, our world faces unprecedented challenges as we witness the increase, the unprecedented increase in violence. We see that new technologies such as artificial intelligence pose new and terrifying threats. The noticeable increase in armed conflicts and military coups, especially in the African continent, is a source of deep concern because these conflicts have a destructive impact on the lives of civilians and lead to displacement and poverty at, a, at an expanded level. All of these issues are issues that Somal is still struggling to recover from. And a lot of the most uh, recent international incidents and which bring back to mind our painful past, we call for an immediate and comprehensive cessation of violence and destruction. We call for abiding by democratic principles and protecting constitutional systems that guarantee civil liberties. Mr. President, uh, in a in an era that is witnessing an increase in hatred and violence, uh, Somalia remains guided by the principles of noble Islam, and it remains as an advocate and a firm advocate uh, for the principles of tolerance between the different faiths and enhancing mutual understanding. We clearly and uh, unequivocally condemn the racial discrimination and oppression that is targeting Muslim communities in many areas of the world. We believe deeply that we cannot achieve harmony in the world except through diversity and through eliminating bigotry. The cause of Palestine that remains intractable continues to be a source of shame to us all and we assert to you and we confirm that Somalia will continue to defend the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people uh, to self-determination and we reiterate our call for the two-state solution that is just uh, and that respects the 1967 borders. Our solidarity with Palestine is true testament to our belief uh, in uh, justice and democracy and the defense of human rights. Uh, Somalia welcomes the new agenda for peace proposed by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, because it reminds us that conflicts are as a result of not dealing with the problems of inequality. And we completely agree with the need to make every effort to remedy the root causes of conflict through a comprehensive development, through dialogue, and through the protection of human rights. Mr. President, we live in a world that is fragmented on one um, on one end and unequal on the other. Therefore, I call for my colleagues uh, and my fellow leaders to work together to reform multilateral institutions such as the United Nations, development banks, uh, the Security Council of the United Nations, because these establishments and their current structures are no longer fit for purpose. Therefore, we must all work together and collectively to implement a collective agenda that would make these establishments and institutions more inclusive, more transparent and accountable and more fit for purpose. The Summit of the Future launched by the United Nations Secretary General is a unique opportunity to tackle these uh, common goals. We call on you 
to stand on the side of peace, justice, and law so that we can establish a world where conflicts are resolved through diplomacy and peaceful means. Mr. President, climate change is an existential threat to humanity, and it is a challenge that knows no borders and responds to no isolated efforts and initiatives. It can only be addressed through a unified will. The extreme cli climate and weather events and the increased uh, temperatures and the forest fires that uh, decimate entire societies in an unprecedented, unexpected and often unpredictable way are all realistic reminders of the consequences of the absence of, inter of collective action instead of simply being a distant concern. In the past years, Somalia has been the victim of a vicious cycle of prolonged droughts and destructive floods that have killed thousands and displaced millions. And it is a great injustice for Somal to, which is the country that had the least to do with carbon emissions globally. It's unfair that it bears the brunt of the negative impacts of climate change. Therefore, we call upon the international community to support us in addressing this urgent issue and in bolstering our resilience in the face of climate change. Mr. President, there is no poorer country compared to where it was in the 1960s than Somalia. Despite this, uh, Somalia and in the past decade has made tangible progress towards peace and stability, and we have started to witness um, quality, qualitative and tangible socioeconomic growth. Our country adopts uh, the principle of a Somalia that lives at peace with itself and at peace with the rest of the world. This is the cornerstone of our foreign policy, and we seek uh, to establish peaceful coexistence uh, and meaningful cooperation with our neighbors and partners to achieve joint prosperity. Locally, we have adopted a conciliatory approach to arrive at uh, political settlements and to enhance the internal and permanent cohesion in our society. And we have dealt with uh, an uh, iron fist with uh, extremism so that it would be stamped out. We have also launched a successful campaign against uh, terrorists, uh, and this campaign was military, financial, and ideological, and we managed to clear more than 45% of the areas that were previously occupied by the terrorist Al-Shabaab grouping in less than a year. Mr. President, our efforts over the past year have shown that if we are determined and if we cooperate effectively with our partners and local communities, we would not leave a single stone for, for the terrorists to crawl under. Therefore, we call for the need to establish a similar approach in dealing with terrorism worldwide. We must guarantee the effective integration of local communities in a manner that protects their rights by offering justice and upholding the rule of law. And here I would like to commend the bravery and the sacrifices made by the African Union's transition mission in Somalia. And I thank the countries that have contributed um, troops towards this, and we thank our partners and allies for their fraternal support. Somalia is, implement, is committed to the full implementation of the security transition plan and in taking over full security responsibilities once Atmos forces depart by the end of uh, December 2024. Here I would like to reiterate uh, Somalia's call for the complete and unconditional removal of the arms embargo that has been imposed by the Security Council since 1992. It is the longest lasting and the widest and most comprehensive arms embargo in the world, keeping in mind that Somalia today has the necessary administrative systems uh, that are strict in controlling the possession use and storage of firearms. Lifting this embargo would allow us uh, to combat terrorism more effectively and build a peaceful and prosperous future for our people. Ladies and gentlemen, Somalia looks forward to a bright, to a bright and prosperous future as we grow closer towards three important milestones. The first one is achieving or meeting the requirements of the heavily indebted poor countries initiative. We have reached the point of decision in this initiative, and we expect to reach the point of completion by the end of this year in a manner that would pave the way to 
providing debt relief uh, for Somalia and unchaining the vital resources in Somalia that would allow it to achieve self-development. The second milestone is the post-terrorism stage once the Al-Shabaab or the Outlaws group uh, is uh, eliminated. As we continue our campaign to stamp out terrorism, we are optimistic about our chances of achieving socio-economic progress in a country that is free of security threats. A third milestone is the post-Atmos phase. Once the foreign forces depart our country and Somalia takes over full responsibility for security, this is an important step to enhance our sovereignty and to renew our social contract with our citizens and to bolster a peaceful and coherent uh, and cohesive society. And we are ready to rejoin the international community as an active and productive partner. We call upon the international community to join us, to join us on this journey and to be part of our success. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, Somalia is a beautiful country. It is rich in natural and human resources. Our doors are wide open to all offers of cooperation to invest in our capacities and to bring shared responsibility to all. Invest in Somalia, invest in the future. Peace and God's blessings be upon you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Somalia for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. We were listening to the statement of Hazma al Bidbar, Prime Minister of Somalia, that was present at the 78th General Assembly of the United Nations on her fifth day. And he highlighted that the most accelerated actions because of the time of inconsistency have passed and the need to transform policies to tangible measures so that everyone will live in peace, prosperity and stability. More breaking news coming up. Stay tuned.